And today, we're pleased to announce our government will soon be making changes that will allow students, starting in grade 11, to transition to a full-time skilled trades apprenticeship program while still earning a high school diploma. This new initiative will help more students enter the skilled trades faster. It will provide more young women and men opportunities for good paying in-demand jobs and rewarding careers. This new pathway will be a game changer for so many students and their families and supports our government's ongoing work to attract more young people into the skilled trades to help build Ontario. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parts Talk. Thank you for joining me, I appreciate each and every one of you. Now today we're going to be tackling ever ongoing problem as it now appears that a shortage of skilled mechanics is now at an all time high. I've been covering this story for the past year and a half and it is only getting worse. So buckle up. We're about to uncover a study that shines a spotlight on a crucial issue affecting the automotive industry. We knew this from before, but now the alarm bells are sounding because now we have the government who is now willing to get involved. Now, this news is coming to you from the Windsor Star and it states automotive repair industry faces long-term labor shortage. So breaking news this month, as it's shown here, a study conducted by the motor vehicle retailers of Ontario has unveiled a staggering truth. So brace yourselves because there are currently a whopping 3,000 vacancies in the automotive technician trades within the province here in Ontario, Canada. And yes, you heard that right, 3,000. Thousand and here's the kicker the shortage isn't going away anytime soon because we're looking at a labor scarcity that's predicted to persist well into the next decade. We predicted this over two years ago, remember that. So, picture this vacant position translates to a loss of around $500,000. I'm talking Canadian dollars here in revenue every single year, and that's half a million dollars. Now, multiply that by 3,000 vacancies, and you have a jaw dropping $1.5 billion drained from our economy annually. That's taxable income waving goodbye right there. So what's the stoop behind these shocking numbers? This study, a collaborative effort involving 20 companies and an industry association representative meticulously examined the state of affairs. These participants representing a whopping 60 individual dealerships across Ontario. So talk about thorough investigation. The focus was a specific job classification, alignment and brakes technician, body and collision damage repairer, automotive electronic accessory technician, and automotive service technicians. These are the unsung heroes who ensure our cars stay roadworthy and reliable at all times. So let's dive into the nitty gritty a little bit. Now, brace yourself for these statistics. Between 2016 and 2021, the automotive technician workforce saw a concerning decline of 3.2%, leaving us with 54,885 employees. Simultaneously, the number of vehicles in Ontario soared by 8.5% to a staggering 9 million. The math doesn't quite add up, does it? But there's more. The number of registered apprentices took a hit as well, plummeting by 12.7% to a mere 17,904. As we hold on to our vehicles longer due to a shortage of new cars and rising costs of new ones, these skilled technicians are more crucial than ever before. So let's put those dollars and cents into perspective. The study reveals that a job vacancy lasting three months results in losses ranging from $107,400 to $161,000. Extend that vacancy to 12 to 6 months and the numbers shoot up to a whopping $429,600 to $859,000 in lost revenue right there. So these figures are a stark reminder of the ripple effect these shortages will have on our economy. But it's not just about the revenue, it's about our workforce and and future generations. According to the study, both federal and provincial governments are missing out on a combined $10,000 to $15,000 in income tax per 
auto service worker earning sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year. That's money that could be using to build and invest in stronger communities and improving our current infrastructure. As we navigate these challenges, it's crucial to explore solutions. Justin Lapointe, owner of Justin's Auto Repair in Windsor, you're seeing pictured here, shares his first-hand experience. With his shop bustling and cars lasting longer, he's in a tricky situation of needing more hands on deck. However, finding skilled technicians isn't a walk in the park. In fact, the issue push dealers and repair shops to cast a wider net. They're tapping into the federal government's temporary foreign workers program, recruiting certified technicians from around the world who are familiar with North American market brands. The numbers don't lie, as there's been an even fold increase in technicians joining under this program since 2016. But let's not forget that our governments also play a pivotal role in resolving this crisis. The long-term solutions hinge on incentives and education. School boards acknowledge skill trades and parents discussing these options as viable careers are steps in the right direction. The provincial government's effort to promote these interests in trades are warmly welcome, as you will see in this video right here from our premier in Ontario, Doug Ford. There's no secret that Ontario is facing a historic labor shortage with more than 380,000 jobs going unfilled every single day. So by 2026, one in five job openings in Ontario will be in the skilled trades. These are rewarding jobs as welders, as electricians, as, as childcare workers, and the list just continues to go on. These are the jobs that will build Ontario because over the next decade, we're going to need thousands of new skilled construction workers to help build the infrastructure our growing population needs, including highways, transit, schools, hospitals, and of course, new homes. That's why our government is investing over $1.5 billion in our skilled trade strategy, working hand in hand with the labor unions business groups, and our schools, colleges, and universities to train the skilled workforce our growing economy needs. Whether it's upskilling workers, training new ones, or breaking down barriers to get skilled immigrants into the province, we're leaving no stone unturned, and it's all hands on deck. And today, we're pleased to announce our government will soon be making changes that will allow students, starting in grade 11, to transition to a full time skilled trades apprenticeship program while still earning a high school diploma. This new initiative will help more students enter the skilled trades faster. It will provide more young women and men opportunities for good paying in demand jobs and rewarding careers. This new pathway will be a game changer for so many students and their families and supports our government's ongoing work to attract more young people into the skilled trades to help build Ontario. So there you have it. The road ahead requires collaboration. LaPointe urges government to expand school programs, making tools and education accessible to aspiring automotive technicians. Additionally, fostering an environment where shops can train inexperienced workers is vital to bridging the gap. But what we're facing is not just an automotive issue. It's an economic concern, a call for innovation, and an opportunity for change. As we navigate this journey together, let's remember that every turn prevents a chance to steer our future towards a skilled, thriving workforce that keeps our engines and our economy running strong. But here's a simple solution. Tell young men and boys that they matter and that we need them. And without them, our country will fail. That's all you need to do. Put in place benefits, compensation and allowances that will encourage and motivate them to participate in this crisis that we're currently facing. And this particular message is geared towards our politicians. You're in authority to do so. It's time to look to the future and stop caring about votes only. What you have to do, in my opinion, is just tell feminism to go F itself. It's that simple. Let's continue to build this country and the world that we live in for our future generations. That's all I have to say in this episode. Please leave your thoughts and comments below. Remember to grab a copy of my ebook, The Parts Manager Guide. Please smash that like button on your way out. It will only take you 1.5 seconds to do so. Until next time.